In this video, we will be demonstrating how we can separate proteins using two-dimensional gel electrophoresis. So the first dimension serves to separate proteins according to their isoelectric point, and the second dimension separates them according to their molecular mass. First, we're going to focus on the first dimension. Here we have a power supply. Uh, this is uh, the Zoom IPG runner system from Invitrogen which we'll use in our electrophoresis. Here we have a plastic cassette where we'll load our strips and finally we have the IPG strips. The IPG strips have a pH gradient so we, hear, we see here that these strips have a positive side which is acidic and a negative side, which is basic. Each strip has a gel side and a plastic side with printed markings on it. The gel has a pH gradient, in this case from pH of 4 to 7. We can also use other kinds of strips with other pH gradients, for example, pHs 3 to 7 or 5 to 6. So we see here at the positive end of the strip, is the pH of 4 and at the negative end we have our pH of 7. So we need to rehydrate these strips with our protein sample and when we apply a voltage the proteins will localize to their respective isoelectric point where they would have a net charge of 0. What's important to understand with these strips is that the gel is fixed to the plastic surface, which is what we see here. So we can touch the plastic surface and we see the written markings on it, where it says the pH gradient and it says the positive and the negative side, as well as a number of each strip. So it's very important to note which stri strip was used for our protein samples and the gel can be found on the other side of the plastic strip. So now we will show you how to rehydrate your strips with your protein sample. So now we will load our sample on the IPG strips. First, uh, we will use this plastic cassette we want the sample loading walls to be facing upwards. We can tell if it's in the right orientation if we can read the word in vitrogen properly. So first we will insert our sample in the walls over here. So for our sample uh, we have added a bromophenol blue which is a dye so that we can we're able to visualize uh, our sample better. So now we can load the required aliquote of our sample and then we introduce it in the hole at the top near the curved end of the cassette. So we can see which sample was loaded between the two openings at either end of the cassette. So now the second step is to introduce the IPG strip in this space here. The IPG strips are in this envelope and the orientation is very important when we load the strips. We have uh, a positive end here and a negative end here and the gel on the uh, surface underneath as well as a plastic side with the writing on it. There's also a plastic surface in between the, the envelope and the gel. So now we will peel off the IPG strip from the negative side. Under each strip there is two little sections that do not have any gel. So to enable us to hold our strips with the tweezer. So we pick up the strip from the negative side and peel it off carefully leaving the other plastic surface still sticking to the envelope. So we can read the writing on the on the plastic surface and we know that the gel is on the other side. Now if you flip it, uh, now we have the gel facing us. 
It's important when introducing the strip into the cassette is to have the surface of the gel facing down. What's also important is the orientation with which we insert our strip. Um, so when we start inserting our strip, we have to make sure it is going in towards the positive side. This is because when uh, we actually put it in the runner system, the positive electrode will be at the bottom. Um, so we want to insert the strip from its positive end because the acidic pH will be at the bottom. And if we don't keep the right orientation, we will not have proper separation of our proteins because the strip will be inverted. So I will insert the strip slowly and carefully, going in with the positive end first and with the gel facing down. It's important also to avoid the introduction of any bubbles into the system. If we have any bubbles imprisoned here, we can try to remove them by moving the strip up and down. So now um, it's important to notice that the positive end is here, the negative end is up here, and the writing is inverted, which means that the gel is facing down. So now we have just placed our gel in contact with our proteins. So by simple diffusion, the proteins with the dye will be integrated into the gel. This is called uh, the rehydration of IPG strips. We want to incubate the mixture for 1 to 16 hours to give the proteins time to get integrated into the gel with the pH gradient according to their isoelectric point. So what we do is we close the wells from each end of the cassette to avoid the evaporation from the openings. So we put a little sticker on the top wells to seal them and we do the same for the bottom wells too. And we leave the cassette at uh, room temperature now for 1 to 16 hours. Um, for the proteins to diffuse into the gel and then we can transfer the cassette to the electrophoresis unit to produce a current. So now we have uh, finished our rehydrating of our IPG strips and we are ready to run our first dimension of the 2D gel electrophoresis. Um, so as a reminder, we first inserted the protein sample and then we inserted the IPG strips and we gave them some time uh, to um, mix together and then for the proteins to get integrated into the gel. Um, so here you see the assembly of the first dimension um, and uh, the main component is the IPG runner core which has the electrodes. Uh, so we see the positive electrode right here and it ex extends uh, all the way down whereas uh, the negative electrode comes to the top. This was important for the cassette when we prepared it because we needed the positive side to be down and then the negative to be upwards. So now that the rehydration of the strips is done, we can uh, access our strips from the cassette. So we need to take off the sticker as well as the plastic part that covers the wells. And now the strips are accessible. This is why the uh, cassette cannot be reused. Now we need to um, cover the wells by um, a filter paper to connect the strips in order for the current to pass. So we need to position our electrode wick between the two black alignment marks and we also have an adhesive part between the two black marks so we just put the filter paper on uh, the wells and we do that to both parts and so now to have a current pass by is to uh, 
actually wet the filter papers using water so we have to apply about 100 microliters of water um, on the uh, filter paper uh, we have to do it uh, to both sides and now um, the current can actually pass through the wet filter paper and through the strip So now uh, we are ready to assemble our uh, units. So here we have the core with the two electrodes and we can bring uh, the cassette and apply it to the two electrodes where the filter papers press tightly across from the electrodes. And um, uh, we need to position it well. And this core would fit two cassettes usually and in case we're using one, um, we can use the buffer dam in the place of a cassette, which is just a plastic uh, plate that we press so that we have a sealed sandwich, um, so the core with two cassettes usually. And now uh, we can insert it into the mini cell chamber. And we need to position it well and uh, make sure that the negative electrode uh, would go into the hole, uh, the gold hole at the side of the mini cell chamber. So now that it is done we can turn it and we see a space that's left at the back of it and what the company has done is they developed what's uh, known as the gel tension wedge. This would go into the um, this chamber and we can seal it um, so that the sandwich is tightly sealed. Um, so here we have the positive electrode which is at the bottom. The negative one is on the top. The current will pass through the negative electrode and pass uh, through the filter uh, paper and traverse the strip that has the gel with our sample proteins and then um, the proteins will separate according to their azelaic point and it will exit through the positive electrode. So now we need to add water to our system because unlike uh, the normal case this uh, electrophoresis does not require using a running buffer and uh, we need to make sure we don't put any water in between the two cassettes because the sole purpose is to cool down the system when the current passes through our strip and so we fill up uh, the box to the top and so now uh, we can uh, put on the lid which is connected to our power supply and we make sure that uh, we connect the wires red to red and black to black. Now there are two uh, outlets for the voltage for this power supply which are 2000 volts and 3500. We need to use the 3500 volt setting. Now uh, this power supply is programmable so what we can do is uh, set it so that uh, the voltage will increase gradually which is what we need for uh, our first dimension um, the electrofocalization uh, step so at the end we'll have uh, a voltage running of 2000 volts for 105 minutes this will allow our proteins to separate according to their um, isoelectric point which is the pH at which the net charge of the protein would be zero so these charged proteins will move to whichever pH will make their net charge zero and that way we'll have um, the separation of our proteins on the strip. 